We are in an historic time in America. If it's not obvious, we are in a historic moment. In the next decade, this country will shift in a lot of ways. And so we're at a moment where we have to decide not who black people are or brown people are or you know, your, your different columns. That's not what we have to decide. What we have to decide is who we are as Americans. Mm -hmm. What does this country stand for? What does it believe in? What will it not stand for? And what implicit bias is, is the automatic association that as a culture, not every individual, but the broad specter of individuals as a culture have absorbed and that automatically are linked to certain identity groups. When we whites are experiencing white stereotype threat, we do catastrophic things, including, according to Phil's work, white stereotype threat is often more linked to excessive use of force by police officers than bias. White stereotype threat, as experienced by teachers, is linked to not giving young people the honest feedback they need on their work to thrive, which kids see in a nanosecond. There was this particular mom that she came out and she uh, was standing like in the, right in the middle, right in front of Obama, the, our target, well, you know, where he lives. <laughs> and, um, and she said out loud, she's like, I am undocumented and unafraid. And she was saying it with like flags around her. Uh, I mean, um, LGBTQ pride flags around her. She was saying it with her son standing really proud next to her. And for me, I think it was a moment of transformation and seeing like how far our movement has come. Our communities, Asian American communities, Pacific Islander communities, and ironically, even Native Hawaiian communities, even though they're native communities, are viewed as the perpetual foreigner. And it's a huge challenge for us in policy work. It's a huge challenge for us in organizing work. And it's something that we have to address. Um, I, I'm a naturalized US citizen. Um, I have an American accent. Sometimes when I'm in Texas and I've had a cocktail, I have a Texas accent, it comes out. Um, and I'm proud of that, but um, I'm tired of feeling like a perpetual foreigner in my own country. And I know our communities feel the same way. We're trying to shift the narrative in foster care and in juvenile justice to what's wrong with these kids and their parents to what's wrong with the system. Um, and why isn't the system, and I, by system, I don't just mean the agency, but I mean all the interacting systems that kids and all of us touch every, days of our, every day of our life. How do we leverage the voices of our members to make them more powerful so their voices are heard in the, those rooms so that when the stories are written about us that get told on our media, those stories are informed not by someone's opinion of us that is distorted, but they're informed by our stories, um, by our hopes, and by our aspirations.